As we all live longer, age really is just a number. But retirement is so much more than one. Your Metro Detroit Edward Jones Financial Advisors want to know what you want out of your retirement so we can help get you there. Call us toll-free at 866-975-8655. Again, that's 866-975-8655 to schedule an appointment. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hello, friends, and welcome to a Friday edition of Your Daily Detroit. It is January 27th, 2023. This is your Daily Detroit sharing what to know and where to go in Southeast Michigan. From east of Woodward, I'm Jer Stays. And from over west of Woodward, I'm Devin O'Reilly. It's good to hear from you, sir. Good to hear from you too, Jer. Another, we are in the thick of winter at this point. So, I mean, not much can be said about the weather. Into the thick of it. It is the middle of winter. It is actually cold. Snow actually arrived, which you know what? I'm not against. I am pro seasons. And if we get winter, a little bit of winter, I'd also, can I put in to the powers that be to get a little bit of fall back too? <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. You know, usually looking ahead to February, we usually get a, a couple like little hints of spring coming. So hopefully we'll get a couple of those in the coming month. But for right now, it is January, which, you know, Jer, a good thing to do this time of year, I always thought, is to have like a little mini staycation. Mm, yes, yes. And you know what? You read my mind because I availed a wonderful opportunity from a listener who owns a place over on Watson Street. And you're going to want to look it up because it's great. It's like they took the inside of the Daily Detroit branding book and turned it into an Airbnb. I'm so honored. Like it was again, I'm like, this is the perfect spot in so many ways because I haven't had a break in weeks. Like even over Chris, like I just this year we didn't have as much, you know, Christmas off. Like things have been very crazy trying to, you know make mm -hmm. things go here. And so it was just a magical night to be able to be away from everything. I love the dogs. I love everything, but it was so good to be away in your own city, being a tourist in your own city. And I uh, was able to splurge a little bit and do some things I haven't done in a minute, like go to Grey Ghost. Oh, fa fantastic place. Can't say enough good things about Grey Ghost. Yeah, yeah. And you know, uh, you're going to laugh. All the fancy things that there are sat next to a wonderful family who was like, you know, why don't you try some? I know you might not want to think it, but the cheeseburger here is really good. Yeah. And I can't believe it, but I had a cheeseburger at Grey Ghost and it's everything I wanted it to be. In fact, I would put it in the pantheon of top burgers in Metro Detroit. You're not wrong, Jer. They do a really good job with it because you know what they do? They kind of like. They, they hearken back to like tr the traditional like McDonald's burger, right? You know, it's got that like Thousand Islandy sauce. It's got the sesame seed bun, the kind of smash burger style, right? I mean, that, it, that's what I recall from getting it in the past. That's exactly it. And then the blend is absolutely wonderful. The other good thing about the burger, like if you want to try a fancy restaurant and like keep the price down. On the other hand, you know what? For a couple of people, it really wasn't that bad for being a high end restaurant. Like a couple of drinks. There's a tiki drink on the menu. I can't remember, but like truly check that one out. You know, I've gotten more into rum since engineer Randy has kind of been pushing the rum on me. And uh, I'll tell you, like, it was just a great experience. And overall, I don't feel like it was out of range for the great experience that I had. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it totally does. I mean, there are other places, and I got, it's nothing against like a she-wolf, but I'm just using that as an example. And she-wolf, you're kind of feel push to make a lot of like course choices. So, you know, if you're going to she if you're having a three, four course meal, you can go to great ghost and you can kind of, like you said, grab a burger, maybe grab a couple appetizers to share and grab some drinks. Cause what I like about great ghost is they are literally a place, one of the best balances of a cocktail program and a food program where neither takes a backseat to the other. You know what I mean? Like they have a five-star food program, but they also have a five-star cocktail program. So I think that really helps when you're kind of going out because the, the drinks can become just as important as the food. And I also splurge for dessert. I did the uh, pumpkin churro. Mm, I have not had that there. With like a cream cheese ice cream. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. Now, if you're looking for heavy sweet, that's not your ticket. I like things a little bit dialed back. It was sweet. It was good, but it wasn't cloyingly sweet. Now for sweet, I walked around the block afterward because I just decided to go all the way in. This is a vacation day, right? I staycation, yeah. Staycation day. I went around the block. I passed Empire, which I want to talk about in a second, but went to For the Love of Sugar, which is open with late hours, which is super cool. 
That's a really cool spot. I remember going there, you know, fairly often, you know, I believe they have some vegan options, um, mm-hmm. some like some no egg, really good options for people with maybe, maybe allergies or aversions to certain kind of, you know, ingredients and sweets. They do a really good job with that. So uh, when I used to live in that neighborhood-ish uh, back in the day, and when my wife and I would uh, would always grab some sweets from For the Love of Sugar in moderation, of course. Creme brulee macaron. That's all I have to tell you. Ooh. It's not always there. But creme brulee macaron, my friend. That sounds about right. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed that, Jared. Did you get anywhere else in your little brush park staycation? It's such a nice little neighborhood. I mean, I took photos. It's different to experience an area kind of like just for a little while as opposed to always being in there. You know, I used to live in the uh, cultural district and things like that. So, I mean, I've been through that area a ton of times. But it's so different when you're just right there, when you're right there with all the things. And, you know, the residents of the Scott and some other places really have a very walkable neighborhood on their hands right there. I can see some of the gaps that are happening in Brush Park that are getting definitely filled in. I saw all the new construction right along by where the Ransom Gillis house. You know, there's so many things there like connecting together that that is an area that's finally starting to sew together to be like a contiguous block. And, uh, you know, we've talked about the Target coming in there probably in reality in the next couple of years. You know, we have a story later on to talk about, too, about a possible hotel. So great little area town, a lot to talk about. But uh, where have you been? Well, Jerry, I was in, I guess, the other kind of really developed neighborhood in Detroit right now in terms of walkability, density, uh, restaurants, bars, and that's Corktown. But I was a little off the beaten path in Corktown. So the impetus behind this was, I'll use this as kind of also a nice little parent tip, is we have some friends who live in southwest Detroit, and we were looking to meet up with them. And they also have a, a baby around the same age as mine, six months-ish. And we were looking for a place. And where could we meet up at that would have like room for strollers if we wanted to keep the kids in strollers, but also like not a, not a place where we'd feel like we were, you know, going to be too loud perhaps. So popped into my mind. Hey, Brew Detroit. I used to love going to Brew Detroit. Crazy enough. I think it's been open for almost eight years now because I think it opened in, in late 2015 or mid 2015. So we went over to Brew Detroit. Jared, they've done so much with it. When I first started going there seven years ago, it was super blank industrial space where they were just brewing beer. It was so sparse. I remember yeah. I went I went there for drinks with a date and there was like a food truck outside and the concept was great. The size was great, but it was so sparse. So you're telling me things have changed. Yeah. And I mean, they had, they had so, so much space, but now they've really filled it in. They've made it cozier. There's booths. There's like real kind of chairs and tables and there's games and like a lot of fun stuff for like kids to run around. Mine, aren't, mine isn't running around yet, but uh, a lot of space, full menu now. So you've got everything from sandwiches to pasta to like, you know, fried appetizers and, um, you know, Brussels sprouts and nachos and all sorts of good stuff. So I was actually really impressed by the offerings of food there. Beer goes without saying, although I do want to say this one thing about them, Jerry, is they are really leaning into the the stouts, which really? I like. Those dark stouts that both my wife and I, we both, we, we can share a love of uh, stout beer. So they have a little gift shop or I'm going to call it a gift shop, call it like a grab and go market right on site. So basically you can pretty much get any beer that you taste at the tap room. You can go and get a six pack or a bottle of it. And so we both really love the modern morning beer. Mm. It's a bourbon barrel aged maple espresso cold brew imperial coffee stout. I mean, you're speaking my language. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot of words in the language, but I, I have recently gotten a little bit more into sours, like with Eastern Market Brewing Company and such. But the stouts and the porters are where my heart is at when it comes to beer. That's just my lane. So I am going to have to check all this out. This is excellent news yeah. for somebody who's into beer. It really scratched me where I itch. It definitely made us say, hey, you know, this is definitely a place you could take kids if you wanted to. There were some other people with kids there. Not to say that it's like super kid friendly, but there's a lot of room to run. It's a very casual atmosphere. It's a really, a really cool industrial space. And the beers are great and you can take them home with you. So that was my kind of, I guess you can call it, Jerry, maybe a rediscovery of Brew Detroit. We'll definitely be back. Now, something like 80% of our email readers and podcast listeners have said that they want all the food coverage, all the things that we can do. They can't get enough. So I feel like we've got a few more things to talk about, Devin, because there are stories around town. I'm going to run all this down really quick, kind of the top headlines, and then I think we can discuss, just in case you don't know, to catch people up. Number one, Wahlburgers in Greektown has closed. That's official. They are off the website. They are done. 
Uh, they were opened in 2016 with a ton of fanfare. Of course, the Wahlberg family has kind of a, a B-list stardom to them. So people were very, very interested in them when they opened. Stash has closed, although I believe it's going to reopen with new owners and a new plan coming forward. That is an Eastern market right there by Russell Street and I-75, kind of like tucked away there. Or I Whatever it is, I-375, that little jut that turns into grash it. It's a freeway thing that kind of cuts through Eastern Market. I think this is an interesting couple of stories mixed with, you know, we talked about on earlier episodes of the podcast what's happening with Promontes, what's happening with Calexico, that this is kind of a trend. And I know a lot of people are worried. And I think in 2023, we need to talk about what 2023 very well may look like when it comes to food and dining in, I'm going to say Metro Detroit. I don't want to limit this discussion to the city of Detroit because it's kind of one market. I know a lot of people don't think of it that way, but when it comes to going out, making adventures, that kind of stuff, people go various places. It's it's one market. Yeah, it is, Jaren. I think between Stash and Wahlburgers, it's two very different stories and kind of why, but it all kind of goes to the same narrative. I mean, the Wahlburgers, I'll say it as succinctly as possible. I just don't think people cared much about it. And when you know they didn't offer a great burger, and I'm going to be just brutally honest, they're gone now, but they didn't offer a great burger. There are plenty of other places, including like a Five Guys Burgers and Fries that was right down the street that had superior burgers anyway. So they didn't have a superior product. They didn't have a product that stand out at all. The Wahlberg name doesn't really uh, doesn't really move the needle needle much in Detroit doesn't really do much for us. And uh, Greek towns are really hard location for anything because you just don't have the daily foot traffic. Yes, you have the casino traffic, so you can sustain things if they're perhaps in the casino and, you know, nightlife, there's that. So you, you have places that can probably exist if they're, you know, bulk of weekend places like the bars, think of like level two exodus places like that have been doing uh, well. But you're not going to get the foot traffic to sustain a burger place that's you know open for well, a lunch and dinner type of crowd. It's just it's not going to be there. And then the stash, you know, again, this didn't stand out, Jerry. I've been there probably five times, but I also hadn't been there in several years because there was just never any reason. There was nothing calling out to me to go there. And it was in the Eastern Market, and there's plenty of good food in Eastern Market to be had. It just didn't really call out to me. I remember when I went there, it was almost like circus themed. Uh, I think they had changed that since, but it just. <laughs> what is with the circus theme? It was cir- it was circus themed. Was it yeah. circus themed? Oh my gosh! Okay, early, early on, yeah, it was it was a kind of like a car- I'll say carnival ish. Like the the food is very kind of like carnival like. I think they probably changed that concept. But then again, it goes to what we say, Jer. When you don't know what to expect when you go into a restaurant, it's not really good. So with Wahlburgers, I want to say that their star power did bring people into the door early on. It was it's not like the biggest star in the world, but Detroit loves our stars. We're obsessed with anything movies and TV, and I think it got a lot of people's attention, but I think over time it just didn't fit into like what the zone is that Metro Detroiters are looking for when it comes to their burgers. Like price is a concern, size is a concern because they did things in kind of like a three ounce patty kind of thing. So people felt like it was, and I mean, it technically was a bit smaller, like Metro Detroiters like our value. That is something that is a a fact. And when you're going to go in this sub $10 market for the burger, Like, that's kind of where you're at. You're not really attracting the high-end crowd, per se. And, you know, Greektown, as you rightly outlined, has, like, a number of issues. It also has a little bit of a perception issue right now. So, it's just a lot of things coming together not in its favor. When I threw this out on Facebook, people were very strongly against. Like, there were some people who missed it, but most people were like, it was just not a match. And so, that goes to show you, it doesn't matter how many dollars you drop in, if it's not a match... It's not going to work. And I think that leads me to the thought of what will succeed in 2023, because I think we are going to see more closings. I think what we're going to see is closings of places in that middling middle. If it doesn't have a reason, if it isn't a special experience, you know, I think we'll see some other closings maybe of places that uh, don't own their space. I think lease rates, depending on where you are in the region, especially downtown Detroit, are skyrocketing. So I think that if you don't have a long-term lease or if you don't own your space, that might lap up some businesses we might not expect to have closed. But this is going to be a big sort out of what happens. And I'm interested to see what does make it. You know, I walked by Empire. I need to go in. They've got new African-American ownership. It is, by all accounts I've heard, like really good. So I want to check that out for myself. I know you were an Empire fan before they kind of did their pandemic pause. Yeah, I was an Empire fan before it was cool. After that hit piece review that Mark K did early on with Empire, um, I was still a fan. I thought they did a great job of being that like 
just did everything good enough, Jerry. They didn't like super stand out, which maybe they're undoing uh, initially. But my wife and I love their happy hour. We had a five dollar pizza and like five dollar like cocktails and, and wine and stuff. It was extremely affordable, and you know that's something you don't see everywhere, right? You talked about that, so it was very affordable for the market and for where it was and kind of the Brush Park area. I really thought it was done. I actually, Jer, fun fact: I went to Empire. It was the last place I went pre-pandemic, whatever that was, March 11th, perhaps. I went there. They were wiping down all the menus. They were disinfecting everything. It was the dawn of you know 2020 and COVID. That was the last restaurant I went to before it all all went black. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And I didn't think they were coming back. Because I mean, look, I mean, for God's sakes, we're talking about almost three years now that they had been closed. And I really thought that that was it for them. But man, they came back and new ownership, which is great. I mean, I love it, you know, love to see more black owned businesses. I think the market can support a restaurant like this. The area can. So I, I've been encouraged by what I've seen. I haven't had a chance to make it over there just yet. Obviously, it used to be a block and a half away. Now, not so much. But I do definitely want to check it out. It's on my short list of uh, places to get to downtown shortly. Overhearing a conversation because somebody was coming out of the place that was frustrated they couldn't get in, get a reservation. They had a three-hour wait. Mm. They're making it work, right? And the place was packed. And by the way, some of the best hats, you know I'm a fan of a good hat. Some of the best hats in Detroit I saw on the patio of Empire. <laughs> very, very cool. Glad to hear it, Jerry. I'll, I'll make sure I, uh, I grab a hat before I go. A good one. You know, I guess today we're talking about Brush Park almost all the way. I mean, I got a couple of stories later on, but uh, in Brush Park, apparently there is new life for this kind of long sitting hotel plan next to the Bonstell Theater. Now, this was announced a few years ago. I want to say like maybe five years ago. And this is like a nearly $50 million plan to basically stick a hotel next to the Bonstell Theater right there on Woodward. So if you think about it, you'll have the new apartments, the Target, the hotel, all that stuff in that like concentrated area. And basically they're saying they're going to do 154 rooms. Basically you're going to call the AC Hotel by Marriott. I'm interested to see this because there is that talk of we need those hotel rooms to bring in those conventions. I will say this, they are looking to city council for a 10-year, $2 million or so property tax abatement so that they can make the math math. Because right now, the project doesn't math without some sort of incentive. Uh, they say that they would employ about 35 people full-time. And without some sort of incentive and support, they say that it would be negative cash flow, which tells me why this hasn't happened in five years, right? This is the challenge with development. If you want to make things go... And I know that incentives are very controversial depending on who they are, where they are, all that stuff. But in the city of Detroit, you need an incentive if you want to get something done. <laughs> yep. Jerry, we'll just keep uh, beating uh, listeners over the head with this. But I know enough about kind of how these developments in particular work. And they're not lying to you when they say that this would not be positive cash flow if not for the abatements. Just because of the cost of construction, the cost of developed properties, this is not something that could be financed without it. It would be a money loss and the financiers of the project would not support it. So it would just wouldn't happen without the, the abatements. And what you're going to get is a hotel, which we need hotels in downtown Detroit and the greater downtown area. We've talked about this. There is absolutely a demand. So we're going to get a hotel. Uh, the AC Hotel is a brand that's on the more casual side, which good. It tells me that it's, you know, we're not talking about a luxury hotel. We're talking about more of a casual hotel. So what I'm hearing is affordable prices. It's more kind of like hip, modern, uh, but smaller room type of situation. I'm encouraged by that. I think concept will do very well in that area. You'll probably get a lot of people. What you'll do is you'll get a lot of people who are coming to like an LCA concert or event, game, whatever it is. And, you know, it'd be one of those things, a staycation of sorts, Jerry, where you stay over in Brush Park and you walk over to LCA for your event or your game or whatnot. So I think this hotel will do very well on this site. Obviously, this is an interesting project because not only are you building a hotel from the ground up, but you're also kind of rehabilitating the historic Bonstell Theater. So it's a bit of historic preservation as well as a new build. And so putting those together is a really interesting endeavor, but one that costs money. Yeah, this question is never going to stop between downtown neighborhoods, the whole thing. But at the end of the day, like the cost structure in Detroit for both of those situations, you know, I was at Marwood and Marson earlier this week, covered that episode with Cheyenne. The amount of financing layers that need to be put together, that's a lot for that too. And it kind of gets to that underlying question of how do we get a situation where it doesn't take these things to keep going? And I don't know how we get there. That's a much bigger thing. And then a priorities issue. But I think for a lot of people, they're going to be very excited about this hotel if this actually comes together. Of course, the city council has to approve stuff first. I will put a link in the show notes to I believe it's a crane story. I know lots of people are talking about it, but 
I'll put a link in the show notes with more details all about it in case you're interested. Devin, before I let you go, I have a couple of fun things to tell people about. First off, a friend of the podcast. I don't normally highlight this kind of thing, but it's by a friend of the podcast. I am looking at a photo that he actually uh, gave to me right now, which I really appreciate. Scott Millington, he is doing a photo walk on January 28th. That's tomorrow, Saturday at noon. So if you are listening to this afterward, I'm sorry that you you missed it, but uh, they are going to uh, start at 27th Letter Books in kind of like the Michigan Avenue Corktown area. They'll be doing a photo walk together, uh, weather permitting. It will start at noon, and they're going to walk along Michigan Avenue. Great way to meet people, get to know people, whatever level of photographer you are, and just kind of like see things around town. He has been having a uh, gallery showing at 27th Letter Books, which also, you know, they're longtime listeners of the podcast, so I appreciate them too. So I want to make sure to shout them out. And then the second thing, is a Punchkey run in Hamtramck. This is the 12th year for the Punchkey 5K. This is something where you, when you get done, you get a Punchkey, you get a beer. This is a pretty popular event, Devin. Yeah, the Punchkey run. I, I love it. Mine as well. As long as we're not going too far. I feel like if you're eating Punchkeys, you're probably also having some beverages. Uh, you can't run very far, but uh, I appreciate the sentiment. Yes, yes. That will be on Saturday, February 18th. So that's up ahead in your calendar. So you can go ahead and mark that off and be ready for it. This is something that, you know, I have seen so many crazy, you know, photos of this, things like that. Do you think 5K is too long for the cold run in your opinion? I know people do it, so whatever. But is 5K too long for you? It's actually not, Jer. I'm mean, actually 5K is my sweet spot. I, I run those frequently when I go for jogs and I go for runs, which I'm a, like a amateur, a bit of a runner, I'll do like a 5k, which is, you know, three ish, little over three miles. So for me, no, no problem. I can do that. Well, I can do a 500 foot. <laughs> <laughs> more of a, more of a sprint then, huh, Jer? Yeah, there you go. This event has raised more than 30 grand for the Hamtramck DDA, which, you know, it's such an interesting and fun community in Hamtramck that I enjoy greatly. Just, just over the freeway. All right, Devin O'Reilly, that is it for today's show. A fun Friday. A fun Friday, a cold Friday. I'm going to need a nice uh, warm meal. Maybe, you know what, now I'm inspired, Jerry. I think what I want for dinner is like a smash burger and then a stout beer. That would be perfect. Great one-two punch. All right, as always, remember that we are supported by our members at patreon.com slash daily Detroit. If you've got feedback, dailydetroit at gmail.com. With that, I'm Jer Stays. I'm Devin O'Reilly. Remember that you are somebody, and we'll see you around Detroit.